Thank you for tuning in. All stereo components were analog devices up to the start of the 1980s. Starting in the early 1980s, everything became digital. My Pioneer rack system that you will see in this video features those beautiful blue fluorescent displays that came with the 1980s, but it also brought an end to an era where you turn knobs and you could hear and feel the clunk of switches. The silver face components were going away, but boy, did Pioneer send out the silver faced era on a high note. If you enjoy vintage audio equipment, you've come to the right spot. Please subscribe and hit that notification bell, as well as giving me a big thumbs up if you like this video and share it with others. There is a risk of serious injury or death from electrical shock working on this equipment. If you're not comfortable with working on the equipment, please do not take the cover off and consult a professional. I'm a hobbyist who collects, restores, and repairs vintage audio equipment. All of the equipment you see in my videos is from my personal collection. Today I want to talk to you about four different Pioneer components. The first one is the Pioneer SA8800. It's 80 watts per channel into 8 ohms and has a 0.05% total harmonic distortion rating. The second one I want to talk to you about is the Pioneer RT901. It's a three motor, three head uh, tape deck and this along with the RT909 were probably the finest reel to reel decks that Pioneer ever produced. Also, I want to talk to you about the Pioneer CTF950 uh, cassette deck, uh, which has uh, Dolby noise reduction and is metal tape capable. And the last but not least is the uh, TXD1000 digital tuner. And this was Pioneer's first tuner with a digital display. The, the insides were pretty much conventional. So we got the silver face, we still got big heavy equipment, but we've got a little bit different of a display thing happening there with those beautiful blue fluorescent displays on all four of these pieces. In addition to that, all four of these are in an original Pioneer rack. I, will, I just wanted to give you a little background on the four on the four different pieces. Um, what I'm going to do, uh, both of the tape decks, both the RT901 and the uh, CTF950, when I obtained them, did not work. Not a big surprise. Um, almost none of the tape decks I get uh, work. I'm going to go over the restoring and restoration of the two tape decks and show you what I did there. And I'm going to talk about the uh, SA8800 integrated amplifier also. So I hope you enjoy the video and here we go. First of the four components I'm going to talk about is the Pioneer RT901 reel to reel. When I got the uh, Pioneer rack home, I took all four components out of the rack. I had no idea when the last time they were powered up, when they worked, when they didn't. I knew nothing about them. So whenever something like that is uh, happening, what I do is just take a look. I just took a look with my eyes and put them up on the test bench and just took a look. So with this Pioneer RT901 and out of the rack, uh, there's no case on it or anything, so it was pretty easy to look at. I, uh, I removed the top cover. I didn't see anything, but what I did do is I powered up the 901 on a Variac just to be safe. I didn't really see anything wrong, but that's what you should do. You should either use a Variac, a, a dim bulb tester, or a combination of the two uh, when, you're, when you're working on equipment that you're not familiar with. So I removed the uh, faceplate from the uh, 901. Uh, I'm going to clean that up. Um, I just, again, getting a little bit deeper in it. I know from experience I'm going to have to do some work on this unit and uh, warm water, dish soap. I mean, it works real good to get the majority of the dirt and the grime up. 
uh, you know, a soft rag, Q-tips, whatever works for you, just to get the general crud out of it. Had to clean up the tape path. That, that again, is, is goes without saying. Before you really, you know, try a reel-to-reel, -reel, you need to clean up the tape path because normally they're not uh, in very good shape. And so you got to just do the basics, figure that hasn't been done. You've got to have, as I always say in all my videos, you got to have the service manual. And the Pioneer RT901 is available at HiFiEngine.com. You know, you're going to have a lot of little parts around. Uh, maybe with that service manual, it'll help you if you if you have difficulty, you know, getting it back together. You know, I removed the back panel, and it makes it easier to to just. Uh, clean the switches you know with deoxit just to get at everything this is one spot where i used um liquid deoxit so mo most of the time you're going to use a spray but this unit had a couple little push button switches that just a drop of deoxit you know put the put the unit down on its back put a drop in there and exercise those switches 30 40 50 times as i mentioned before it's very important that when you use deoxit that you uh exercise whatever you're cleaning with it i felt confident enough to power it up uh it did power up the pioneer rt901 and 909 are both known to have issues with their tape tensioners both the left and the right it's it's just one of those things that they all need to be taken apart and cleaned these tape tensioners there are a lot of parts inside this tape tensioner doesn't look like much but when you take it apart you're uh, gonna be in for a surprise if you're not familiar with them. One thing working on any tape deck, including this one, you 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 just have to be organized and be patient. That's all I can say. Um, because you're going to have a lot of little parts. And like you look at this picture here, you see these little plastic balls? You think, well, what's the big deal if I lose one? I'll get another one you won't get another one. <laughs> it's a huge problem if you lose parts in a reel-to-reel. -reel. You know, I've started to loosen in, loosen up the uh, the tape tensioners, got it apart uh, halfway here, and uh, get that old uh, damping uh, lube uh, cleaned up and uh, add some new. And, you know, it, it, it should be good to go again for, for many years. But as I said, there's a lot of parts in this thing. And uh, tape decks are, uh, doesn't matter if it's a reel-to-reel -reel or a cassette, there's just a lot of small parts, and uh, patience is the key. So, after reinstalling the tape ten tensioners, I got everything back together, you know, enough to, uh, you know, thread a tape in it and uh, give the RT-901 a, a, a try. And... Um, a wow and flutter meter or a woe and flutter meter, I guess that's where you're from, uh, which which word you use, but same difference. You What you want to do is anytime you're, you've got a, a tape deck, you want to measure that because it gives you a general idea on how the unit's just handling the tape. It's not the tell-all. But it gives you a real good eye, good real good feeling that you're probably in, in decent shape. I use an MRL calibration tape, which is the standard in this day and age to set up reel-to-reel -reel decks. Uh, Pioneer no longer makes tapes. TIAC no longer makes tapes. Nobody makes test tapes for their equipment anymore like they used to. So fortunately, there's a company in California that makes calibration tapes because you must have a known good starting point. Don't mess around with any of the calibration pots if you do not have a known good test tape. I have a Sound Technology 1510A, which is a great, uh, great piece of equipment for testing tape decks of all types. Sound Technology ST1510A will test just about everything you see in the back of your manual, just about every specification. This unit really didn't, I didn't have to do much. I, I did tweak a little bit the azimuth adjustment. I didn't really do anything else. The main problem with this was those uh, tape tensioners, and they're all this way after 40 years. Every single Pioneer RT901 and RT909 need, need those tape tensioners taken apart. They just do, and it's a little bit of a pain to do also. But once you do that, uh, this is a tremendous, 
tremendous reel-to-reel. -reel. That's the Pioneer RT901. It was working good on the test bench, and so I went to the next tape unit, which is the uh, Pioneer CTF950. So let's get to that. As with the RT901 that you just saw, this CTF950 cassette deck also needs um, some repair and some restoration, as all tape decks do. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, it doesn't matter if it's a reel-to-reel -reel or a cassette. After 40 years, there's something wrong, literally, with all of them. Um, I'm going to take a look, just like I did with the RT901. Just look with my eyes. I've gotten it out of the Pioneer rack, and I've got it up on the test bench, and I'm just going to look at it. And you should always look at any unknown piece of vintage audio equipment, because you may find something uh, that you could have found just by looking. I removed the faceplate, because I know I'm going to have to get to the transport and change the uh, belts in this unit. There's four belts. And they, and they all need replacing in these old decks. There's a real problem in today's world getting good belts, so just keep that in mind, and that's both for open reel and uh, cassette decks. Gonna clean everything up, got plenty of grime. This is not unusual in, in old audio equipment. I've removed the transport, and again, let me say up front, you should have the service manual. You have to disassemble the transport to replace the belts in this unit, and you have to do that in, in every cassette deck or open reel deck. You have to pretty much take them apart. And again, I want to warn you about the small parts. They're small parts that you may not even know you have. So that's the biggest um, obstacle to overcome if you're not familiar with these uh, tape decks are the small parts. And you want to always take ton of pictures. I've removed the cap stands for cleaning. Uh, you just keep working your way into the deck. Uh, as I mentioned, there's four belts in this deck, and also there's also what they call an idler tire, and that'll be replaced also. It's 40 years old, just like the other belts, I'm sure. That needs to be replaced, and it'd be silly not to replace it when you have to take this whole transport apart. And once again, there's so many small parts. You just got to do this, uh, be patient doing this type of a project. Do it in a organized manner. I just want to give you a little tip. And this is for you guys that haven't done this before. Uh, you know, if you have a clip, if you have a C-clip, an E-clip, whatever it is, right, you put a little screwdriver down in there, you pry it out. And if you don't know that that thing's going to go flying, well, it's gone flying before you know it, and all of a sudden you hear this ting, and it hits the wall across the room. And you're thinking, well, where'd that go? So, you know, for you guys that are familiar with doing this, really, what you do is just put your finger over the top, right, so that clip can't go flying. But if you want to be extra careful, you can use a plastic bag. But, you know, once you get the belts all in, and you've gotten everything uh, all cleaned up, and you've gotten some new grease put in there in the appropriate spots, uh, it's time to put the unit back together. And you just do in reverse what you did. What you need to do if you can, and in this unit's case you can, and in many of them you can, you can keep the transport outside of the chassis and give it a try. So if you do have a problem, you hate to put this all back together, and then you put a cassette in it, and it doesn't work. And you think, oh, geez, you know, here we go again. Take it all all back apart. So it's great, and, and many of them you can do this. I'm not saying every single one you can. Just give it a try while it's still all apart in case you have an issue. So it looked like the transport was working. You know, I felt comfortable I could put it back together now. And so I went ahead and I reinstalled it into the chassis. Uh, the tape path, it goes without saying, you know, as I mentioned before in the RT901 reel to reel uh, repair and restoration, always clean up the tape path because there's a good chance that the deck you're getting, the tape path will be a mess. Here you go. You've got this beautiful blue fluorescent display. I mean, it really is pretty, especially with the other ones all on. Oh man. And you still got that old school silver face. As I said, these components were just starting to change over. And you still have that heavy, 
well built, top notch engineering put into these decks, but you got kind of the new displays coming. And uh, Pioneer did a very nice job. Got it up on the uh, bench, and what did I do? As, as I always mentioned, you know, just try a little recording, try a little playback, all was good to go. After going through the RT901 reel to reel and the CTF910 cassette deck, it's time to move on to the Pioneer SA8800 integrated amplifier. And once again, I'm going to take a look at it first with my eyes. I've removed it from the Pioneer rack and put it up on my test bench. It's in pretty good shape, just, just cosmetic shape, just like the uh, other units in, in this Pioneer rack are. And I've taken the top cover off, and I can see there's years of dirt. Uh, not a surprise, right? They're all, many of them are like this. So there's going to be some cleaning up to do. I powered this unit up also with a Variac. I didn't know anything about it. I didn't know what was going to happen. So when you're, when you're dealing with unknown equipment, always use a Variac, a dim bulb tester, some combination of those. And it's just much safer to power up unknown equipment so you don't smoke something. I've taken the bottom cover off once again, just to, just to take a look and to make sure there's just something not obvious that would cause a problem. I've removed the face plate to get all those decades of dirt off. A great way to clean the knobs is just a little dish soap and an old toothbrush. And it really worked good on this. I took the unit outside and I used some compressed air, a paintbrush, um, you know, just, just to clean it out a little bit. I used Deox on all of the switches and all the pots. And I also, uh, don't forget the connectors. That's one thing a lot of people forget about. They, they forget about these connectors in the back, the speaker terminals, the RCA jacks. They need to be cleaned too after 40 years. So don't forget the back of your unit. I'm going to revisit this SA8800 and get in there and do what I normally do, is get those old electrolytic capacitors out of there. But for now, I'm going to put it back in the rack. This Pioneer rack is gorgeous to look at, but it's also great sounding. All of these components were still being built with the quality that the earlier components were. It wasn't too many more years after this that things really went downhill in the audio world as far as build quality and the engineering of the products. But these are still there. These will still be here 50 years from now. I'm really confident of that. They're, they're built to last. You've got that beautiful blue fluorescent display, as I mentioned a couple times. What's not to like about this rack system? Pioneer did a wonderful engineering job, and as I said, they still have got that build quality that was there in the 60s and 70s. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, I'd appreciate a big thumbs up down below. For you non-subscribers, if you like this video and like to see more like it, please subscribe. And for my present subscribers, I always say the same thing. Thank you so much. You all have a good day.